Today we're going to have a look at Julian's Hibertia, which is a critically endangered species of plant. It's not a particularly special plant to look at, and I'm not able to tell you exactly where it is, but it does have an incredible story. Welcome to EnviroTube. We're in Sydney, which is Australia's most densely populated city, and it's not the sort of place that people would usually think about finding a new species. But in 2007, Andrew Robinson was working in the bushland team and found something that looked a little bit different. He spent a number of years working with this plant and trying to work out what it was and if it matched any of the known species, and it was actually found to be something new. It was named and described in 2015. The common name for the species is Julian's Hibertia. We have a special show today where we're going to talk to Chantel Doyle, who's doing a PhD in the conservation management of Julian's Hibertia, or Hibertia spinantha. So is there a particular reason you chose this species? I mean, there's a little bit of a mystery to it, isn't there? Something that was only discovered, only named as a new species in 2015. You don't actually expect to find new species in the Sydney Basin. <laughs> oh, so this is a good patch. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? So this one, I suspect, that they're all separate individuals, yeah. but we'll find out. They might actually be clonal. And with this many, I mean, we must be looking at about 20% of the population. Yeah, almost 30% of the population right, right there. Now. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 89 individuals. This yeah. is the largest population in the world. <laughs> but one of the other populations has one individual. Just one individual. One plan. individual. Even just impacting a couple could have a huge impact particularly when we have only got four known populations of it in yeah. the whole world. And it could mean that you're taking away 30% of the gene pool, like yeah. if you're taking it out of here. And so for things like the translocation and for all of the things we're trying to do for the conservation, yeah. it could put that in jeopardy. Yeah, exactly. I can't show you any flowers because we're out of season now. Walking through the bush and looking for a plant that's critically endangered, you might expect to find a really big flower or something that's quite beautiful, like the Waratah or something. Yep. This one doesn't really have that. No, it's really inconspicuous. Why is it important that we conserve just, you know? It's a really good question. And a lot of people say, well, why would we care about something that's only found in four locations? There's a lot of philosophical arguments about that. You know, do we want to be the custodians over extinction is one of them. I think one of the strongest reasons that we would conserve it is the fact that it gives us a reason to conserve the remnants that we have left as well. So it's actually, you know, in a way we focus on these iconic plants, yep. um, but it actually helps to reserve the remnants, which are the areas of bushland that haven't been cleared. Absolutely, they serve an ecosystem service to us in that they give us recreational spaces, but they also serve an ecological purpose for all the species that use them. And actually Sydney still has some really amazing diversity. I mean, we've still got a lot of threatened birds and mammals that, yeah. that use these tiny little fragments. And are just so dependent on those fragments. Mm -hmm. As stepping stones. Yep, yeah. yep. They step through the landscape. And it's pretty remarkable that Andy Robinson, who worked for Karingai Council at the time, was walking through one of these and found something that he thought looked, looked different. Yep and it was right on the edge of the track and nobody had ever thought to check it out before. And it must be a dream of all ecologists to, to find something new and yep. be able to name that species. Yep. Somewhere in this thicket are a lot of other seedlings that were not found. So on this side we have the burnt population and which means we've got a lot of seedlings. Well, we think they're seedlings. And then on the other side we have what is estimated to be up to 50 year old plants that haven't been burnt and they're substantially larger than these tiny little guys we have here. Right now what we're doing is we're taking samples for genetic analysis. Part of the things that we do to conserve species are set up translocations or what's called population augmentations and that means yeah, <laughs> that means that we take plants from other populations and we mix them up. But before we can do that, we need to make sure that they're not going to swamp. Genetic swamping, which is um, a dominant gene, will take over less dominant genes. And we also need to work out 
the right percentages of combinations of, of yeah. genes. That's to avoid inbreeding and outbreeding? Yeah, so some of the populations don't really set fruit and one of the reasons that could be is that they're inbred because there's only one Yeah, is that the same individual. as it being clonal? Or? Well, not the same. So clonal would mean that they're genetically identical, but right. inbred could just be a sibling. So, I mean, we basically say we don't like to yeah. breed with siblings and plants <laughs> often don't yeah. like to do it either. It's taboo even within the plant world. <laughs> yeah, but some plants interestingly can self-pollinate, they can set seeds, and because some species only live in really discrete areas like this herbertia, or Hubertia, maybe it doesn't matter to them that they're closely related. Yeah. So that's what we need to find out. What we need to do before we do any of the translocations is we need to collect some leaf tissue. So you can hold on to our envelope, which is barcoded there, and we're gonna send it off for analysis in Canberra, and we're gonna understand the relationships between the plants here. We only need about three or four leaves, uh, and we take leaves that are in really good condition, so these young apical shoots, safely into this envelope. Yeah. And then we're going to pop them in this esky here. Tomorrow I'll take them into the herbarium of New South Wales. They're going to grind up the samples for me and then send them off for analysis. Sounds good. Yeah. You go first. Yeah, I've got to be careful where we step. No, no.